That's, uh, that's actually a really great segue. I, I, I thought that uh, in, your, in your bio you kind of have that little thing at the end about life on the road and eating gummy bears at 4 a.m. Yeah. I, thought, I thought that was very sort of poetic, but also you, you said, and I still dream. You know? And I was really, um, it seemed sort of subtly profound. And I just kind of wondered, I mean, to be Dave Grohl, it sounds like a good dream, but what, what are your kind of career aspirations? What are your dreams? Man, um, I mean, it shifts, you know, all the time. You know, you play these big rooms and you you dream of all those people singing your songs, you know. I mean, I think that's the, you know, if, it, if, if, if I was playing theaters, man, if I was doing a thousand people a night, you know, that would be incredible, you know, incredible. And if everybody was singing it back, I mean, that's why I do this and that's why I go out on the road and that's why I play. But, you know, I think for me as a kid that grew up completely enamored and, and slightly obsessed with arena rock and roll, you know, to play to 15 or 20,000 people, you know, in an arena where you, it shakes the walls and people sing words or people cheer. Um, you know, being in arena shows growing up, I mean, that was always something that gave me chill bumps, you know, and it still does, man. If I see, you know, there's very few bands that can do it now, you know, but when you go see a show in an arena, you know, where there's, you know, usually a sports event and there's a rock and roll band playing and everybody's, you know, into it. I love it. And there's a lot of people, man. I think there's a lot of, like, you know, hipsters or people people that are like, you know, I'd rather see a band than, like, an intimate club. And I would, too, you know. I mean, I, I would, too, as a fan because it sounds better, you're closer. But as a dude in the band, <laughs> you know, when you look out and you see all that and you hear that, feel that energy, I mean, I, of course I'd love to feel that. I'd be lying if I said I didn't, you know. And you can always play the club tour, you know. You can always do a club tour afterwards, you know. So, or do a garage tour like the Foo Fighters did, you know. So, uh, I guess sort of on the on that note, uh, what what are your your plans that you have going on from here in terms of other albums? Um, or, or are you probably just pretty busy with what you have going on? Yeah, I mean we, we're. Uh, we're still pushing this record, but you know, I mean, I put it out in April, and yeah. we've been giving it. We've been doing the noise trade thing, yeah. we've been giving away for free, with, you know, on the, with the fire escape video, and just trying to get as many people into the record as we can. But I, I want to make another one. You know, I think that's where my heart is kind of leading me at the moment. You know, I, mean, I talked to my manager the other day, and it was just like, I don't know, I'm getting that bug again. You know? <laughs> So I think, it's probably a good thing for them. They yeah. like to hear that. Right? Well, you know, it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like there's so many songs ready to be recorded, and now it's a matter of kind of picking the best ones and, you know, and chasing the right ideas. And, you know, you never know. It could be, sorry, excuse me. Wow. You have to edit that out. <laughs> it's hoppy beer. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, we, you know, I definitely, I definitely want to make a record, and it could be January, it could be February. You know, you never know. But um, that's where my kind of my eyes are set right now. So I'll, I'll get you out on this question. Uh, I was wondering, you know, the, it seems like your the, the message in your songs kind of go from unrequited love to to you know just like more like chill songs, hangout songs. So yeah. I was wondering, kind of, do you have a, a particular inspiration behind what you do it seems like you you have a range of emotions in, in the music that you write yeah i mean i think you know i would be lying if i said that it's it's uh not you know life experience you know i mean that's like i've always been taught to sing about what you know about you know and and there was you know, there's a period there where you know there's a lot of you know there's a lot of heavy songs you know there's a, yeah. the fire record and <laughs> Five Chances record, and you know, there's just a lot of things I was going through that, you know, sometimes the only place you have to go is your room with your guitar, you know, and your and your own head, you know, and and there's been a lot, uh, a lot more of that in the atmosphere as well. So you know, lately, you know, I think that it's all channeling itself into a record. So, you know, I have no, I never have plans of writing. I'm gonna write, you know melancholy tune today, I'm gonna, you know, I think it's just, you know, if my songs are sad to you, then don't listen 
but if but generally man the ones that seem to touch people the most are the ones that were came from a place of heartache you know and, and I think for me you know even even songs that are um, triumphant and sound the message and the, and the lyric may have come out of a place of like desperation you know, feeling like you had nowhere else to go but you know your instrument and your pen you know and I think that's what songwriters I think that I think that as a songwriter I feel like that's my job is to you know do that to the best of my ability and channel all the things that are inside me into a song and you know, who knows man the next record may be you know, full of ballads or maybe full of rock songs maybe full of you know sad happy hopeful I don't know you know I'm Stuff to say, they're kind of all over the place. Great. Well, thanks a lot for uh, for, in, for letting us interview. Yeah, dude. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah.